Hey folks, Kevin Deal here, and on today's episode, we're going to be playing with fire. So anyway, here I am in Austin, Texas, and we're looking for a cool spot to do some uh, some fire photography. We're going to do some fire twirling. We're going to do some fire breathing. Uh, and I was just thinking this cool reservoir spot, but I really like the graffiti. So this is where we're going to test this out today and hopefully it'll all work itself out. So as a portrait photographer, I always want to challenge myself to try new things. Why did I want to tackle fire? Well, because I've never done it before. Capturing fire at night is a challenging thing. You've got a really bright flame. You've got a scene that you need to light up. You've got ambient light that you want to mix in. So there's a lot of moving parts that you have to control. So my method going into this was I wanted to control that flame. If you can control the flame, you can fill the rest in with your lights. For this shoot, I used a Canon EOS R5 along with the RF 28-70 to F2, but I want to be abundantly clear that you do not need a fancy camera or fancy equipment to achieve the results that you see in this video. All modern cameras can handle the shutter speeds that we're talking about using today, and most lenses stop down to f16 and open up to about f2.8, which was the range of settings that I used for these shots. So with that said, it's less about the equipment and more about the operator. All right, so let's get the disclaimer out of the way first. If you were at Burning Man and you saw somebody twirling fire and said, oh man, I wanna shoot that, don't do that. Fire burns, if you don't know what you're doing and you've never worked with fire before as a photographer, then you need to befriend a professional fire performer. They know the safety precautionary measures because they do this all the time. I do not, so I'm not gonna be giving you that advice in this video. What I can tell you is that we did use something like a fire extinguisher and a damp cloth, but you need to follow their lead. I just wanted to get that out of the way because there's a lot of idiots out there and I'm not gonna give them advice on what to do. This is gonna be focused on photography. So, now that we got that out of the way, we did do a really cool shoot, so let's go check it out. So let's talk camera settings. I wasn't really sure how to approach this shoot. I'm not making this video today like I'm an expert on shooting fire. I have been shooting photography for years, so I do understand light to a degree, but I've never shot fire like this. So I wasn't really sure what to expect. I really wanted to be reactionary and just kind of see how things were happening and then use my years of experience to react to it. So we started off with a device called a dragon staff and the dragon staff makes some really cool patterns that got my mind thinking, okay, maybe I should do a slow shutter speed so I can catch those patterns. Well, at first I was blowing out the highlights because I was letting in too much light. So I wanted to create the blur. So I stopped down a bit for the first location. I used a couple of mono lights. I shot them down the tunnel. I gelled them to create a cool rim light and then I used a beauty dish to light the performer from the front. I'll get more into these settings in just a bit. I thought the first look was pretty cool, but it just wasn't what I was looking for. So instead I shifted gears to freezing action. So the settings that I used that got the shots that I was most proud of today was I raised the shutter speed to over a thousandth of a second to capture action. I raised my ISO up around a thousand to capture ambience. And then I stopped down my aperture between F8 and F16 because I really wanted to darken the fire. Now I exposed off the fire. I set my exposure to the flames and then I used my strobes to fill in the rest of the scene. 
Those settings we'll get into a bit later. Now, some of you at home might be like, wow, you were up over a thousand ISO. What about noise? There's some of you out there who get bothered by noise. Personally, I came up on film. I really like grain. Noise doesn't really bother me, but most modern cameras nowadays handle noise just fine. Pretty much anything under 6400. And there's actually cameras out there that are better at handling noise than my R5. We've got programs like Topaz Denoise. You've got programs like Capture One that have noise reduction built into them. And of course you have that in Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. So there's options out there. If the noise bothers you, it doesn't really bother me, especially with this particular scene with it being grungy. Okay, so let's talk off camera flash. I use a simple three light technique and with the fast shutter speeds that we are using, you will need high speed sync. For my key light, I started with the Flashpoint AD400 Pro and a 22 inch beauty dish with a 26 degree grid running around a quarter power. Why did I use a beauty dish? Okay, the big reason I used a beauty dish is because I thought hard light on top of hard light made the most sense. You have a grungy reservoir, you've got graffiti everywhere, it's dirty. I just thought hard light made more sense. I saw other fire photographers who used a soft box coupled with the fire, but I didn't like the way those two types of lights balanced with each other. So I kept it hard light on top of hard light and I was very pleased with the results. Another added bonus of a beauty dish is if you're out there without an assistant, it actually withstands wind pretty well. All right, so let's talk about the other two lights. I use the Godox AD200 as well as the round head add-on at full power, and I noticed these three holes at the reservoir. I decided to stick them back on the other side of the reservoir and shine them back through to the performer. Now, I was anticipating seeing a lot of smoke, being that there was a fire, but there was a lot less smoke than I had originally thought. That being said, I did notice that while Kelly was spraying the fire in the air, that there was a little bit of fuel that would spray with it. That gave me the idea of, well, let's just use those rear lights that were intended for the smoke and shine them back to capture the spray. For color effects, I used a blue gel on the right side, and then I used an orange gel on the left side. So let's talk about our takeaways from this session. Okay, when you look at this picture, you can see on the lower left, there's some combustion happening where the gas is converting into fire from the liquid. And it looked really cool. If I could have done this over again, and if I'm critiquing my own work, I really wish I had moved that left light down a little bit more and then pointed it up so it could have gotten through that hole in the reservoir. But as you can see, there is no visible combustion on the right side of that flame. So as I stated at the beginning of this video, I'm not an experienced fire photographer. I have been shooting for years, but this channel is about my journey in photography. Sometimes I nail things and sometimes I don't, but you get to see it all out in the open and you get to learn from it and you get to take my experiences and apply them to how they work for you. I learned a lot of really cool things today. Um, I learned some things that I'm gonna do differently next time, like I just need to double check and pay attention to my rim lights a little better. And I wanna thank Kelly Jones who made this possible. Without her, I would have not been able to have achieved this shoot. I really appreciate you guys checking out this video. I hope it was educational. I hope you learned something. Please hit the like and subscribe button below, and I'm gonna leave you with a few of my favorite shots of the day. See you soon, bye.